the next obstacle I had was bringing Ken Russell over, and as he lands, I am learning everything in life. I'm, I'm at the time, only 28 years old, and this is the third film I'm producing, and I'm going on a very fast track, but I've lost all of my mentors. Sandy Howard's busy doing other things. So I don't know things like he's British, and this is the United States, and he's going to need a work permit. So I'm introduced to the good offices of Mr. Ralph Aaron Price in Century City, someone who passed last year who I believe to have been the greatest immigration attorney to ever practice the business. And he handled all of Ken's H-1 matters. And through that, I realized I don't have any particular need to sign the DGA agreement because the reason you sign an agreement with the Directors Guild of America is because you're hiring a director who's a member of the Directors Guild of America. When I put the job posting up for production manager, I hired a production manager who I'd worked with on uh, Angel, Mr. Bob Manning. And notwithstanding his relationship with the Directors Guild, we did, Angel was not a Directors Guild signatory. Bob had no problem working on that. I, I'm pretty sure he was a member, but he wasn't concerned about doing non-union work because he was mostly getting non-union work. We then recruited Pat Keogh, who had just come off of uh, Poltergeist, or, or, or was just going on to Poltergeist. I'm not sure the chronology, but Pat was our first AD, and, and Pat is hands down the best first AD I've ever had the pleasure of being in business with. It, so much so that when I did Two Moon Junction, and I knew that Zalman King really needed a strong first AD, uh, I offered Pat a co-producing credit if he would not only be the first AD, but really, really, really assist the director in the work, go, go the extra length above and beyond. And he accepted my offer. And that's why he became a co-producer and first. But back to the point, we're on a location scout with a director who's not DGA, a UPM who's not DGA, a first AD who is DGA, and a second AD who is DGA. In, in order to make sure that there'd be no friction on the show, I filed papers to become a DGA signatory. I, I accounted for it in the business plan and we bonded it. Rather than give me any kind of courtesy of a response or any kind of professional way of conducting themselves, the DGA thought that they would just simply be tactical. So on the location scout, and, and we're dealing in a time where cell phones were a good idea, but only a very few people had them. What everybody had was pagers. So the first AD is paged while we're on the location scout. And he returns the call because it's to Warren Adler at the DGA, the, the, the guy who handles all the relations with producers and such things. And Warren has told him to tell the production manager and the second assistant director to walk off the movie today, right now, at this moment, because New World Pictures is the financier and distributor of the show, and New World Pictures won't sign an agreement. So Pat says to me, Borchers, why won't you sign an agreement? I say, Pat, I, I not only want to sign an agreement, the papers are all filed. They were filed four weeks ago in anticipation of the whole project, even before getting all of the green lights in place, because you don't lose any money if you're doing paperwork ahead of the game, and I wanted everything prepared. I'm, I'm kind of meticulous with paperwork. And, uh, and Pat says, well, this doesn't make any sense at all. Why is the DGA telling us to walk off a picture that you're trying to signaturize? This doesn't make any sense to me either. Let me call Warren Adler. And he says, in, in deference to what you just said, and I want to work with Ken Russell, I'm not going to tell anybody I just got this call. Tell me what Warren says afterwards, and then we'll decide what our next step's going to be.